come to you Lord God our lips are sinful our hearts are full of deceit oh father we get our ways many a times oh father so we ask you to cleanse us I ask you to cleanse me oh Lord wash me clean that I may stand righteous covered by the righteousness of Lord Jesus Christ oh Lord that I can stand before you and we will not perish. Forgive us of our sins, O Lord. Wash us clean, O Father God. And as we come into your holy presence, O my God, I pray, mighty God, that you will accept us as we are, full of shortcomings and limitations, Father. But you make us whole. You complete us, O oh Father God. We thank you for the power of blood of Christ that washes away our sins, O oh Master. Thank you for washing away our sins. Thank you for forgiving us of all our unrighteousness. Thank you, Master. And as we come, and as we sing, and as we praise you, Lord, as we bring our sacrifices of praise unto the house of the Lord, I pray, mighty God, may this be a sweet, sweet aroma unto you, my King, my Savior, my Master. May this bring you pleasure. All that we do, O Lord, may it just glorify you and you alone. Hame Atma se bhare ji. हम आपकी आराधना प्रभु जी आत्मा और सच्चाई से करें प्रभु जी सिर्फ इन होंठों से नहीं प्रभु जी बल्कि पूरे मन से पूरे दिल से हम आपकी आराधना करते करना चाहते हैं पाकरू हमें सिखाइए और हमें खुदा के भवन में हमारे साथ चलिए ताकि हम आपकी प्रस्तिश और उपासना कर सके आराधना हो आत्मा से आराधना हो सच्चाई
तो मेरा यहोवा नसी है तो अपने लोगों का यहोवा नसी है खुदावन तो अपने फरिश्तों की फौज हमारे लिए बेचता है मेरे परमेश्वर जब जब हमें जरूरत पड़ती है प्रभु जी तो अपने फरिश्ते हमारी मदद के लिए भेजता है परमेश्वर जी तू हमें कभी भी अकेला बेसहारा नहीं छोड़ता मेरे परमेश्वर जी आपका धन्यवाद करते हैं प्रभु जी दैट यू आर ए फेथफुल गॉड हु नीदर स्लीप्स नॉट स्लम्बर्स ना तू सोता है खुदावन ना तू ऊँगता है बल्कि तेरी नजरें हमेशा तेरे बच्चों की तरफ लगी रहती है मेरे परमेश्वर तेरा धन्यवाद करते हैं यू आर द बैनर ऑफ अर विक्ट्री लॉर्ड गॉड वी विल नेवर फेल We will never fail, Master, because Jesus never fails. Jesus never fails. हमें अपनी आत्मा से भर खुदा बन हम अपने पाक रूह से भर प्रभु जी हमें वो मसा दे परमेश्वर ताकि हम यशु के मानंद बन सके ताकि हम यशु की छवि में ढलते जाए प्रभु जी और जिस कार्य के लिए आपने हमें भेजा है प्रभु जी वो कार्य को हम वफादारी से ईमानदारी से पूरा कर पाए हमें समर्थ दे परमेश्वर हमें अपनी पाख रू से भर ताकि हम तेरे दिखाए हुए रास्ते पर चल सके आत्मा से भर दे मुझे पवित्र आत्मा से भर दे मुझे ताकि जहां भी मैं जाऊं गीत तेरे गाऊं ऐसा यशु कर दे मुझे आत्मा से भर दे मुझे आत्मा से भर दे मुझे हाँ वे मुझे आत्मा से भर दे मुझे पवित्र आत्मा से भर दे मुझे
तेरे लिए ही जीऊ तेरे लिए ही मरू तू जिस राह पर चला मैं खुदावन उस राह पर चलू परमेश्वर तेरे लिए मुझे जीना सिखा तेरे लिए मुझे मरना सिखा प्रभु जी तू जिस राह पर चाहता है मुझे वहां लेकर जा मेरा मन उस राह पर हो मैं पूरे ईमानदारी से प्रभु जी उस राह पर चल सकू I don't want to serve you merely with my lips oh lord I want to serve you with my life I want to serve you wholeheartedly not half heartedly lord I long to serve you my god totally completely in submission in surrender in subjection of my almighty god help me lord to be honest When I sing this song, tere liye hi jiu, tere liye hi maru. Let me be honest in what I'm singing, Lord God. Help me, Father, to lead a life that's complete in You. And as we all sing together, let's mean it, and let's tell our Lord and Savior that we want to live for Him and we want to die for Him. Tere liye hi jiu. तेरे लिए ही मरू तू जिस राह पर चला मैं उस राह पर चलू हाल लुया जहां भी मैं जहां भी मैं जाऊ
ہستے خدا بنے تو ہمیں نیا دن دکھاتا ہے جب ہم گرتے ہیں تو دوڑ کے آتا ہے ہمیں اٹھاتا ہے ہمیں سینے سے لگاتا ہے اپنا بل دیتا ہے اور ہم آگے چلتے ہیں سارے جہاں میں خدا بن جی تو سا کوئی نہیں اس لیے میں سب پیچھے چھوڑا ہی خدا کا کیونکہ جب میں نے تجھے جانا مجھے پتا چلا کہ تو ہی کیول خدا ہے تیرے جیسا اور کوئی نہیں میرے پرمیشور سارے جہاں میں تجھ سا کوئی نہیں تجھ کو چھوڑ کر کوئی پربو ہے ہی نہیں گھٹنے اس لیے خداون میرے صرف تیرے آگے جھکیں گے یہ سر تیرے سجدے میں جھکے گا میرے خداون کیونکہ تو ہی میرا پربو ہے اور تو ہی میرا پتا ہے پرمیشور تیرے دھنیواہت کرتے ہیں پربو جی تیری کرنا تیرے انگرہ کے لیے پربو جی قربانی ہونٹوں کی قربانی کی بھیٹ پربو تیرے چڑھنوں میں ہم چڑھاتے ہیں پربو جی سویکار کیجئے گا پربو جی جی جو اپاس نہ ہم آپ کی کر رہے ہیں جو اراد نہ ہم کر رہے ہیں پربو جی اسے سویکار کیجئے گا let it not just be under this roof but let it reach the throne room of God oh father and you get glory and honor and praise from all that we sing and play the musical instruments so far hallelujah karuna sitte hai
praise you, along with your angelic host, O oh Lord God. We stand before your throne and we sing hallelujah to your holy name, O oh Lord God. We worship you, Father God. We worship you, Lord God. We surrender, Master, completely at your feet, O oh Father God. We give our lives to you, Master. May we bring you praise. Lord, we thank you for this time in your presence. Lord, we pray for the message that we will open our hearts and our ears to listen to your word and we will apply it in our lives, Lord, to have a closer and more closer walk with you, to have a deeper and more deeper relationship with you, my God. May our relationship become stronger and stronger each day, O oh Lord God. Help us to be your followers. Absolutely, absolutely in love with you, Father God. Help us to stand apart. Help us, give us the strength to stand apart and follow your word and your commandments. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. It's such a blessing and a privilege to stand here and proclaim His grace, His mercy, His unceasing love for, yes, for each one of us who are sinners. I'm indeed indebted to God for his grace that's upon us and our family. You know, last month, in the month of October, we, in the U.S., of course, we um, celebrated Clergy Appreciation Month. For most part, a lot of people are now celebrating second Sunday of October as a Clergy Appreciation Month to recognize the works of ministers, priests, leaders, elders of the church, those who are serving God in various capacities. And it's a great thing to acknowledge what people of God are doing for God's kingdom. I'm not a fan of um, designating a single day in a year to, to celebrate something. I believe personally that that celebration should be a consistent pattern in our life. And because of that designating as one day, there is a, this high, high risk of commercialization where, you know, people, the stores are selling stuff. People are so focused on buying something or getting something for their loved ones or for their mother on Mother's Day or Father on Father's Day that we actually lose the, the essence of celebrating a Mother's Day, a Father's Day, or even a Pastor's Appreciation Day. I believe that then we fail to practice whatever we are doing on that one particular day. We fail to practice that throughout the 364 days of the year that we are living. However, I do want to thank God. I want to acknowledge people who God used in our lives to bring us to Him and to serve Him and to grow in Him. I'm thankful to God for Pastor Vinash and his wife. I'm thankful to God for Samreen Javed. We had tremendous growth at that point of time when we were very fresh. I'm thankful to Noel Didi and her family for that fellowship that we had where we were enriched in his presence and we learned so much. I'm very, very grateful to all these people that God has brought in our lives. Let's pray. Father, I thank you and I worship you. I exalt you, mighty King. I declare that I am nothing. I, I confess. I acknowledge, Lord. I have no strength, no power, no wisdom, no intellectual, no understanding of my own. Hence, I completely depend on you, Master. I completely depend on you, Lord. I depend on your Holy Spirit to bring forth your word so that I may apply it on my life first and may be able to bring it to the people 
that are watching or listening, O oh Lord. I submit, I surrender, my God. Thank you for this privilege to serve you and to honor you all the days of my life. Take charge, Holy Spirit. Teach us your ways, O oh Lord, that we'll become more like Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, talking about the celebration of Clergy Appreciation Day, or, you know, some people call it as Pastors Appreciation Day, or I, I would even say, go ahead and say it's a appreciation of the church leaders, whether they are serving as evangelists, as pastors, as prophets, whatever capacity they're serving in, it is a privilege to honor them because they are people who are chosen by God. So why should we respect them and why do we need to celebrate this special occasion or these people that God has brought in our lives? There's one and only one reason. They are handpicked and they are ordained by God. You know, the call of God is undeniable and it is a great event. It is an excellent thing to serve the one who has called us. And God handpicks. He handpicks his people, the ones he wants to use. And I will repeat that again. God handpicks his people that he desires or that he wants to use in the life of others on this earth. And when God has handpicked this person, and when God has said, okay, I'm going to use Mr. X or I'm going to use letter uh, Mr. B, as my spokesperson, as my, as my servant, who am I or who are you to decline that, to go against that? I dare not go against the person whom God has called to be his servant because he has been handpicked by God. He has been ordained by God. And pastors, I want you to, or church leaders, I want you to hear this and hear this again. Handpicked by God. And we not handpicking ourselves because that is not going to work. If God has called you, if God has handpicked you to serve him, praise God. If God has not handpicked you and all of a sudden you one day get up and say, okay, I'm going to serve God and his calling is not upon your life in the office that you are in right now. I pray for you that the Lord will give you wisdom and understanding and spirit of a discernment as to see in which direction the Lord wants you to go. You know, God is very picky when, he's, when he handpicks his people. Let's walk back to the, to, to the times of Jesus in the New Testament. Peter and Andrew, you know, fishermen, unaware of what's going on around them. You know, they're probably perhaps thinking, okay, how am I going to make this ends meet? I wonder how many fish I can catch. How's the weather in the coming days? That's probably what was on their mind. And then as they are, Casting their net in the sea. Jesus calls them and says, come, follow me. I will make you fishers of men. The, the creator coming down, calling a common fisherman and telling him to follow him. What a call. This is what I mean by being handpicked. James and John, they're sitting on their boat. They're mending their nets. And Jesus says, follow me. And they leave everything and follow. Matthew, he's sitting at the tax collector booth. And Jesus says, follow me. And this tax collector, with a bad, bad reputation, chooses to follow Jesus. And that was, you know, we can say, okay, I was not there at that point when Jesus was on this earth. Okay. Paul. He's so upset with the believers. He's so mad at the believers. He watches somebody being murdered for the cause of Christ. And he goes to Damascus. 
with something on his mind what he is saying is i am going to bring every believer that i find whether that's a man whether that's a woman bound to jerusalem that was his plan he's running to he's going to damascus to bring believers so they can be tried and killed and tortured this is how god hand picks and he goes he's on the way to damascus and he falls on the ground there's a flash the bible says there's a flashing from heaven flashing of light from heaven and he falls on the ground and he hears the voice of god and god says why are you persecuting me and as he gets up the heart has been changed the desire to kill has been changed to the desire to be killed for the cause of Christ. There were, there were other people with, with, with Paul. The Bible doesn't say how many people were there as far as my understanding goes. There were other people with Paul, but God handpicked Paul to use him for his kingdom. That is what I mean by handpick. And you say, well, nothing of this sort has happened to me. Well, think about the time you were saved. Hallelujah. Think about the first time when he touched you and he changed your heart and he transformed you and you understood that you were a sinful person and you cried all night or all day long and proclaiming and telling God, asking God forgiveness and telling him that he will follow. This is what it means to be handpicked when he personally, when the kainat banane wala khud aaya wa jo jab wo khud aake aapko aur mujhe chhuta hai, that is being handpicked, that is being very special in the sight of God. You know? He handpicks you and me. He handpicks his people that he wants to serve in the, in the various offices. And he, desires those people to be respected in the position that they are in and i want to bring to you two um, two scriptures actually you know clergy appreciation can be traced back to the time of paul when in his writings to the, in his letters paul is encouraging churches and paul is encouraging the believers to respect those who are in authority and I'm going to read from 1 Timothy chapter 5, verse 17. It says, let the elders who rule well be considered of double honor, especially those who labor in preaching and teaching. Let the elders who rule well be considered of double honor, especially those who labor in preaching and teaching. Then also Paul writes the church of Thessalonica in chapter in First Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 12 to 13 says, But we appeal to you, brothers and sisters, to respect those who labor among you and have charge of you in the Lord and admonish you. Esteem them in the highest regard in love because of their work. Be at peace among yourself. It's a commandment of the Lord to honor, to respect his servants. And when God has chosen people, when God has handpicked people, when God has ordained people, we are no one to disregard that, to decline that, to disapprove of that, because that has been granted by God himself. You know? So what do we do? How do we consider them in double honor? Respect them. The Bible says that the person who is serving, serving God is worthy of double honor. Hallelujah. If the church leader or the pastor is doing the best of to the to the best of his ability to serve God in the capacity that he has been ordained by God, you and me have no right to tear him down. You and me have no right to bring him down, to talk about him, to gossip about him, to assassinate his, his whatever his designation or his position or his 
uh, his uh, places in the society. And God has ordained him to teach the word of God, to bring the word of God. He has not ordained him to be your errand boy or to be your hired help. Unfortunately, a lot of people nowadays use pastors and church leaders to the utmost that they can. And once their job is done, matlab nikal gaya, no pastor, no nothing, no picking of call, no calling back, nothing. Very dangerous because when you are using God's servant, that's not what God says. He said you need to respect them and hold them in double honor. They are handpicked. They are appointed by the God and by God Himself to lead the flock in the will of God. They have been appointed to lead His flock. So it is important. It is a commandment to you and me to respect those who are in that position. How do we respect them? So God tells us to respect those who He has handpicked to serve Him. We are also to refresh them. You know. What do you mean by refreshing them? Refresh them with your prayers. You know, as, as pastors and their family, once God calls a pastor into ministry, his whole family is called into ministry. And the family bears the brunt when the pastor cannot give enough time to his family. When the pastor is not in, within the financial uh, situations, he's maybe not able to meet because he could have been working somewhere else and serving without serving God and made a lot of money. But he has chosen to answer the call of God. And here he is serving God with very limited resources, with very limited finances. He's, he might be struggling. I don't know. People wrestle. They also wrestle just like you and me because... They're also same human beings having the same challenges as you and me. So refresh them with your prayers. Pray for them as they prepare the message at home, as they deal with their own family situations, as they reach out to others to bring the gospel, as they help others to be at their bedside when people need them, as they're delivering the sermon on a Sunday or as they're doing the Bible study on Wednesdays, Leaders, church leaders need a lot of prayers. And you and me as a church member have the responsibility to refresh them with our prayers. Refresh them with your loyalty. Yes, praise the Lord. You know? It's what's being a believer in a church or being a member of church. It's not only coming to church on a Sunday, praise the Lord, hallelujah, on Sunday, and then that's it, goodbye till next Sunday. That is not what it means to be a part of a church, to be a member of a church. To be a member of a church is your loyal. You are there when things are needed. You know, a lot of the surveys reveal, statistics reveal that 80% of the church's work is done by 20% of the people and the rest 80% are sitting on the couch or sitting on the pews and saying ye yahan nahi ye wahan lagao isko aise kar do ye na theek nahi lag raha isko pastor ji thoda badal do no you are supposed to get up from that chair you're supposed to walk you're supposed to help you're supposed to do whatever is required before even you're told it is our responsibility as church members to be there for the church to do whatever is required for the church that will refresh your pastor oh what a joy it gives your pastor to see his people coming to church to see his people praising to see his people growing this is how you refresh your pastor praying for them being loyal to the church i'm not saying be be very loyal to be loyal to the pastor and his family that's not what i'm saying i am saying being being loyal to god and his church we have to be loyal to that place and give our 100 percent and not just be sitting there and be the spectators of whatever is going this is not our responsibility this is not the job god has given god has given you and me the job to get up to walk and to whatever, do whatever is required in the church. 
the pastor should not have to tell you, please aap ye kar denge kya? Me and you should be the one coming forth and saying, mujhe bataiye kya karna hai? I'm available. I should be able to do it. Refresh them with your growth. You know, a couple of years ago, I, I really didn't want to continue being a pastor's wife. I, I was tired of, of not seeing any results. You know, we are so dependent on our five senses that if we don't see any, any change, we feel like there's no growth. And that's exactly, I was, I was feeling like I, I am a failure and hence there is, I don't see any advancement in my church, in the people. So not wanting to be in a place where I'm not growing, I asked Lord, I said, God, I don't want to be a pastor's wife. Please relieve me of these duties. I struggled, I requested God to do that. I didn't hear anything from God. So, you know, for the fear of going out of God's will, I still did that, but I was, I was, I didn't feel like I was doing enough to where I could see the results. And then one night on December 31st, as we were having a watch night service in our house, I, one of, as we were sharing everything, one of the church members mentioned how he has grown closer to God and how he's learning the word of God. And God said, this is it. And you know, a lot of times we don't see uh, changes or we may get discouraged. And I, asked, I told God that night, I said, Lord, even if you use me the whole of my life for one person, I will stay wherever you want me to stay. As long as it is within your will, I will stay. So there's it's a lot of encouragement when the pastors or church leaders see the church members growing in spirituality, growing in prayer, like praying a childish prayer to praying a prayer of a warrior now, a believer who is a soldier of the living Christ. When they see that, that is their refreshment. That is where their energy comes. That is where their joy stands. Amen. That is what it is. Refresh them with the expression of your gratitude. You know, we are so quick to condemn, to judge, to gossip. Yet we are very conservative when it comes to genuinely, and I say genuinely, expressing our gratitude for others. We're very stringent when it comes to that. It is important, friends, that we genuinely express, express our gratitude to the one who is leading the flock. Because just like you and me, that person also needs encouragement and needs to know that what that person is doing is just not useless or in vain, but it is bringing forth fruit. Mm -hmm. Refresh the pastors, refresh the church leaders, refresh the ordained with your giving. Wow, hold on. It's so hard for us to part with what we have. It's so hard. Are you have to 10% nahi nikalta. Giving kaise karenge pastor ka? How am, I, how am I going to give to the pastors? Well, this pastor has given up his life. A lot of times their desires. A lot of times their time with the family has been taken away and invested in the church. Invested in somebody's house where people are grieving. He leaves his wife and he goes to meet those people. Or his wife who is so tired and exhausted, he drags her along. He takes her with him and says, let's go and meet. They are giving to the church. They are investing in the church. They are investing in your families. Let us give. Let us give to them. And I'm not talking only about financial. If you can do it, it's a great thing because your reward is in heaven. 
because when you go to heaven you will be shocked and surprised i strongly believe for all the things that we have done here god's word says everything that we do in the name of jesus is going to be rewarded one day so get ready if you are on that giving end get ready because we are going to be in for beautiful beautiful surprises when we will and we will be shocked at how many times the lord had uh, softened our hearts and taken us and put us on the giving end give as you can give your time give your money if you can give your services if you can it's important to give in the kingdom of god for his glory and for his glory alone so so we need to respect them we need to refresh them with our loyalty with our giving with our expression with our uh, uh, with our, our enthusiastic involvement in the church you know the pastors also the church leaders these were the responsibilities of of a believer who is a member of a church or a member of an organization but then there are certain responsibilities on the part of the church leaders and church pastors also dear church leaders please remember that you have been handpicked and appointed by god yes you have been ordained for a very special service remember that you are of god but you are not god remember that god has ordained you god has ordained my husband to be his servants to lead the flock but we are not god we cannot declare ourselves to be superior yes we are special i am special i'm a pastor's wife but i am in no way superior to any other person on this earth let's not proclaim ourselves to be highly seated up dear pastors and church leaders let's make sure that we are called by god you know if god has called you and if god has called me nothing like that great service unto the king for his glory there is celebration in heaven but if you have called you or if i have called i it's a pure wastage of my time and those i am involved with if god has not called you if god has not called me don't play with god yep. do not play with god it is dangerous it is lethal it is fatal to play with god and his kingdom and his people james chapter 3 verse 1 says not many of you should become teachers my brothers for you know that we who teach will be judged with greater strictness that means this bible verse not only applies to everybody else but me it applies to me first as a pastor's wife and then it applies to everybody else pastors and church leaders make sure you walk in obedience of god first timothy chapter 1 verse 5 says maintain good conscience before god and others that means to walk daily in submission in obedience in surrender not of any man not of any woman but of god we must walk in obedience of god church leaders and pastors make sure you teach the word that he has given us let us make sure that we teach his word and not our word you are called to teach and preach his people from his word not his people from my word from my opinion from my experience no we are supposed to teach his people from the bible and from the bible alone and nothing else the whole truth the whole truth 
not sugar coated, not concealed, none of that. Preach it as it is. People will be offended, yes. People will leave the church, yes. But you have to preach the word of God as it has been written and nothing else. And be patient and persistent. Let's remember, church leaders and pastors, that often the messages that go forth from the pulpit fall on deaf ears. You know? But keep preaching. You know, keep preaching. There, there, there will be battles and there'll be there'll be such a desire to give up, to to go away, to run away because you don't see anything, or because people don't like you, or because people don't like your wife, or because your daughter has red hair, so she's the most most worst sinner in the world. If people maybe people think that. Be passionate, be persistent, be patient. And continue to preach his word, to do his work genuinely, with honesty, with right motives. Stand firm. Cling to Jesus and nobody else. Because the one who called you, the one who called me, the one who has called us is faithful. And he will take us from here forth. Dear pastors and preachers, remember that you are not only appointed, but you are also equally accountable. You're special, but you're not superior. Service unto the King of Kings is excellent undertaking. But remember, it's a huge responsibility on our shoulders. We can fake people. We can fool people. We can tell lies to people, mm -hmm. but Khuda ki huzuri se bach ke hum kahan jayenge? Khuda ya teri ruh se bach kar main kidhar jaun? Samundar ki gehrai mein, asman ki uchai mein, He is always there. We cannot fake. We cannot fool. We cannot deceive. We have to serve Him with honesty, without wrong personal motives mm -hmm. we have to serve him within the boundaries of the holy scriptures let us enrich ourselves by doing the will of god not only on bible study days not only on a sunday let's live every moment every hour every day every week every month every year all our lives Diligently seeking him, honestly serving him, without any personal wrong motives. Mm -hmm. Let's watch over the flock and let's not mislead them, but let's lead them in the right direction. So that the responsibility that you and me have been given is accomplished and God is glorified. You know, in closing, I'll say as shepherds, pastors, and church leaders spend pretty much all of their life trying to do God's work. And often they feel inadequate, alone, isolated, judged, undervalued mm -hmm. as they walk the call that has been on their life. They're not perfect. They also have desires, they have joys, they have plans, they have hobbies, they have habits. They're just like you and me. But many of them have given a lot of things up, which you may never even find, just because they have been called into the kingdom of God. Friends, I don't care what your pastor is like, as long as he's preaching and he's living a life within the boundaries of the Holy Scriptures, I urge you to support your pastor, mm -hmm. to be there, to enthusiastically involve yourself and give your services unto the King of Kings through that church or through that pastor. When was the last time you picked up a phone and called your pastor? Mm -hmm. Or is it just 
the pastor who has to call you? When was the last time when the pastor finished preaching, you went to him or her and said, I'm so touched by your message. When was the last time you called him and said, or called her and said, pastor or church leaders, elders, we are praying for you. Is there anything I can do for you? Let us support the one who has been called by him. Support the one who has been called by him and walk together in unity. Let us walk together in unity hand in hand so that not to you, not to me, but the one who has called you and me is glorified in heaven and on this earth. Mm -hmm. Let's pray. Lord, I put myself as a member of the church and I see many, many failures on my part. And I ask you to forgive me, Father, and equip me with the strength and capabilities to do your work in the church, Lord. I also, Lord, stand on the side of the pastor, not to say that I proclaim to be a pastor, but as a pastor's wife, I see so many failures on my part. I know I have to do more. I know I need to do more. So Lord, I ask you to forgive me yes. for what I have not done that I was supposed to do. And I ask you, Lord, to make a provision to strengthen me so that I can do your will as I support my husband as his ministry, O Lord. Help me to see through the eyes of Christ the lack where I need to improve. Help me to be more like Jesus, Lord, that you may perfect my faith, that I will walk the calling that you have on my life, O Lord, that you can one day look at me and face and say, well done, my good and faithful servant. Give us the strength. Forgive us of our iniquities, O Lord. And help us that we will all walk in unity so that you'll be glorified in heavens and on earth, O Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.